guys! Welcome to another FAQ Friday. Probably one of my most asked questions is how do I discipline? Like what are my views on discipline? It's asked several different ways. I've actually been wanting to make this video for a really, really, really long time. I just haven't got around to doing it. I guess I'll just talk about like my views on discipline as a whole, I guess. I know this is like one of like the most controversial subjects. It's just one of those parenting topics that a lot of people don't agree on. Just know that this is my personal opinion and how I am raising my children and I don't view anybody who doesn't agree with me any differently and I think this is completely parents choice, parents decision on how to raise your children. So the way that I view discipline in itself, like the word discipline to me means to teach rather than to hit, which I know a lot of people, to a lot of people that is discipline. Like if you say you need to discipline your kids, it means you need to hit your kids. I just don't see it that way. I think when you discipline your child, it's an opportunity to teach them through various different methods. My ways of disciplining my children vary on depending on the child. All children are very, 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 very different. And I think a lot of people kind of think that there's two forms of discipline, either timeout or spanking. Really though, there are so many different ways that you can actually discipline your child. Positive reinforcement is a huge one for me. You got two snails? Sorry, I'm like so distracted. Oh, is a baby snail? That, oh, you wanna show the camera, don't you? Oh, there's Caden's little friend. Say hi, snail. Hi. <laughs> come okay, no, I don't want to. No, snails stay outside. Go find the snail's house. Oh my gosh, gotta love having boys, right? Anyway, I lost my train of thought. Basically, positive reinforcement is a huge one with me. I do this with all of my children. For example, Landon, he is at an age where he doesn't necessarily know if something, I can't think of a particular example, um, but he might not necessarily know that what he's doing is wrong. So like for his age, I use a lot of redirection. He's doing something he's not supposed to. I'll say like, no, Landon, don't touch that. And then let's go over here. Let's go show, let's all like show him something that he can touch or that he can do. Or if he's trying to like bounce a cup, I'll show him you can't bounce a cup, but you can bounce a ball. Something like that. Um, so it's a lot of redirection and positive reinforcement. And for the twins, the twins are so vastly different in every aspect of their life. Like every single thing. I always say like anything that can be different with them is. <laughs> and that goes hand in hand with discipline as well. Kyson thrives on attention. And if he doesn't get positive attention, then he will find a way to get negative attention. So that's just kind of how he works. So the, the discipline that works for Kyson doesn't necessarily work for Kaden. And actually, it doesn't work for Kaden. Of course, there are times where your child does something that needs to be corrected. No doubt about it. They hurt somebody, they hit. Spitting is one thing I do not tolerate. I, oh, I don't tolerate spitting. I guess the age that I would start doing stuff, kind of like time out and stuff like that, probably around age two, depending on the child. I think Lilia was probably about age two when I started doing that. I guess I'll start with Lilia. Lilia is the typical timeout child. I've had to put her in timeout probably twice in her entire life. And ever since then, she is like my like number one well-behaved child. Like she she wants to please people. She does not like to get in trouble. Whereas Kyson, that's not necessarily true. Not that he likes to get in trouble, but his personality is just very different. Lilia now, she's almost five. She, for the most part, I don't want to sound like one of those parents, but she's really, really well behaved. And with her now, if she does anything even remotely bad, if I just say the word timeout, she is done immediately with what she's doing and she will never do it again for the most part. That and with her, one thing that works with her, I don't even know when or how I started this, but I'll start counting. And I, and when I say one with her, she's done doing whatever she was doing. So I, Lilia, one. Okay, okay mom, sorry. So she is my easy child. Definitely, definitely easy. The twins, as I mentioned, are 100% different. When they first started getting to the point where they understood that they were like doing something wrong, I tried timeout with both of them. I don't use a whole lot of timeout with them now. Um, what works for Kyson is taking things away. Unless what he does is harmful or painful like to another child or something like that. That is an immediate timeout. And in my form of timeout, sorry I'm like kind of scatterbrained, I'm just trying to like think of everything, but my form of timeout is basically you go in the corner, 
you face the corner. You obviously no toys, no anything like that. And um, we kind of have one corner that we use for the most part. Um, but if we're somewhere like at somebody else's house and they need to be disciplined immediately, I'll just pick any corner. So they kind of they kind of know. I'll face them in the corner, hands by their side, and I don't have like a time limit of how long I keep them there. I more so read their body language and see how they're reacting to it. And once I feel like they know then they understand that what they did was wrong. That's when I'll get down to their level. I level, turn them around, talk to them, tell them why they went to timeout, make sure they understand what they did wrong and kind of just go from there. I mean, each situation is different. Each child is different. That's pretty much what I do um, for timeout. With Kaisen, if he's doing something, as long as it isn't something like harmful, if he's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing, taking things away works with him. So I'll take away something that he's playing with or take away one of his favorite toys or just take away something and that is when he immediately will change his attitude. Kaden is completely unfazed by timeout, completely unfazed by taking things away. Um, the only thing that I have found that works for him is putting him in his room and giving him a timeout in his room away from everybody else. Door shut and everything. That is the only thing that he actually responds to. Their personalities are just so different. He has the personality where he just wants to please people. So positive reinforcement with Kaden works really well and he hardly needs any discipline um, in that aspect. He's pretty well behaved. I main, I don't want to call him a problem child because he's not a problem child, but he's just the one that needs the most like, um, attention and focus on the discipline is Kaisen. He's the one that pushes the limits. He's the one that knows that he's doing something wrong and will continue to do it until I correct it. And actually with him, one of the main things that works with him is ignoring the bad behavior. Because like I was saying before, Kaisen craves attention, positive or negative. So he requires a lot of attention, a lot more attention than a lot of my other kids do. And if you don't give him the positive attention, then he will find a way to get the negative attention. So ignoring the behavior, ignoring the bad behavior is really, really works for him also. Landon, he's still obviously very young, but his personality is like exactly Kaisen. So I'm gonna have my hands full with that child. He's built like Kaisen, he has Caden's coloring, uh, but he has Kaisen's attitude. The three main things that I have learned throughout disciplining four children is number one, set clear boundaries. I think a lot of the time kids get in trouble because they don't necessarily understand what they can and can't do. There's a fine line sometimes between what's allowed versus what's not allowed. So setting those clear boundaries and talking about those boundaries, talking about you cannot do this, but you can do this, offer them like an alternative to something that they can't do, really helps clear up a lot of the confusion. Not all the time, depending on the age, but I feel like a lot of the time it's, they just don't know. Especially with younger kids, I guess. The older kids, obviously, yes, they, they do know. But I mean, it all, it all just depends on the situation and the child. The other thing that I've learned is to reward the good behavior. And that kind of sets the tone in your whole parenting lifestyle. Rather than going around and telling them, no, don't touch, no, stop it, no, don't do this. When they do something good, be like, that was so nice of you to do that, Kaden, or thank you for helping me pick up, Kaisen. Things like that, positive words, we're rewarding the good behavior. We'll make it to where they want to listen and follow directions, and they want to help out, and they, they don't want to upset you. The third thing that I've learned is to follow through with what you're your, your threats, I guess you could say. If you tell them, if you do that one more time, you're going to time out, you need to put them in time out when you say that they're going to time out. If you keep telling them empty threats, they're gonna learn, what are you gonna do about it? Like, I'm just gonna keep doing it. You're never gonna actually put me in time out. It's actually like a really big pet peeve of mine when people say, if you do that one more time, I'm going to insert something here, and then when they do it, they don't follow through with it. And also, I guess there's one more thing too. Another thing that I've learned is to pick your battles 100%. Is it really that big of a deal if your kid wears those glasses to bed? Like, sometimes it's just not worth the fight. If it doesn't harm them or it doesn't harm anybody else, it's not doing any damage, sometimes I'm just like, you know what? Go ahead and dip your fishy crackers in your juice. That's fine with me. So that, I guess for the most part, is pretty much how I discipline. I know it's kind of all over the place, but I really just feel like every child is extremely different. And we don't do the spanking thing, obviously, as I've kind of talked about. We don't do the spanking. Different things work for different kids. It's something involving hurting, though, or like I was saying, spitting, hitting, absolutely not. I can get my mean mommy voice. I don't know if any of you guys have ever actually heard me say it, but I'll get the serious face 
and the stern no. <laughs> I can't even do that. That's so weird doing that to the camera. And they will get in huge trouble. But we don't do the spanking. But for the most part, it's a lot of positive reinforcement. So I think that's actually pretty much it. I think I've kind of hit all the points that I wanted to hit. If I missed anything, you can ask questions in the comments below and I'll answer anything that I feel like I skipped over. But that is pretty much what I do for discipline. And I hope this answers all of your guys' thousands of questions about how I deal with discipline in my house. So that is it for this week's FAQ Friday. And I will talk to you guys for my next video. Bye. baby names. How we came up with the kids' names that they have now and what they would have been if they were the opposite